of all, can I ask you to explain how you were inspired um, by a first-person account when creating this particular screenplay? Sure. Well, this story was really intimate. It was character-driven. Um, unlike most war stories, this was told from the point of view of two men. And so to understand what that was like, I read every first-hand account I could because I was trying to understand what it was like to be soldiers on the ground. And traditionally, um, the overarching histories of the war don't tell it from that point of view, so first-hand accounts were my straight go-to. Can you set up how you wrote this film with Sam Mendes, how he started with it, and then how you collaborated? Yeah, so Sam called me up one day and he said, uh, I have this idea, um, I want to co-write it with you. It's set in the First World War, are you free? And obviously, Sam Mendes, so you're free. Um, and he has told me a little bit about his grandfather. He said he has this one image, it's a messenger carrying a letter through no man's land. And that was the kernel of the whole idea. Um, and we discussed it a little bit further. I kind of probed a bit more and found out how personal it was. And then um, he said, OK, I'll meet you Tuesday. Oh, by the way, it's all going to be one shot. So I knew what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be an incredibly personal and relevant story for Sam. And that I knew that it was going to be really, really tricky um, to pull off as a challenge. Um, and so when we sat down together, really what we spoke about was the journey these two boys could take. The Hindenburg retreat and um, the sort of the, the historical framework of it and then who the characters would be who would take us on this journey who would lead us the audience through it. You said you know when Sam pitched you it was going to be um, one take how did that affect you writing the screenplay the technical document yeah um, because it is so I, I guess one minute a page but this is something very very different tell me about that approach. Um, so it affects every single part of the screenplay it even affects the story structure that you get to before the screenplay because first of all well it, it's a story told in real time and you have to then think, well, take your own life. Do you have a two-hour window of your life that has a beginning, a middle, and an end? You know, uh, great characters, interesting action set pieces. Uh, it's basically, would you spend $90 million making a two-hour window of your life? Maybe you have a very exciting life. I did not have that kind of life. Um, so there is a natural kind of... Uh, how far can you push the audience before they stop believing that this is reality? Like, how far can you show the audience, like, can there be this, can there be that, before they go, no, I don't believe this would happen in a consecutive time period. So that's the first task. The second task in the script, I could speak to you for hours about how tricky that is. But to sum it up, I suppose it's really, really hard. And basically what you have to do is, instead of writing a road map, instead of writing, a, you know, a sort of set of directions, which is what usually a script is, you have to write the finished film. And Sam and I wrote this film on spec. No one paid us to do it because we didn't know if it was going to work. We didn't know if the story would sustain, if it would work at all, really. So what we had to do was prove it. So that script was proof of concept. So every single line describes the frame of the film as you move through it. And it has to, of course, technically describe how to do the movie, but really its main goal is to be emotional. Can you outline the story for me very briefly of 1917? Um, yeah, so what it is, these two young men are given the impossible mission where they have to go through what is potentially enemy territory um, to deliver a letter that will stop an attack. And that attack, if it does go ahead, will kill 1,600 men. And one of the men was the brother of the two guys, the messengers. Can you describe to me the uni unique relationship between our two men that we follow? Yeah, so it's Blake and Schofield. Blake's younger, um, greener. He's not really seen any action. I love the idea that he sort of read The Lone, the Lone Ranger and he's just become like obsessed with this idea of being a hero. So he's young, idealistic, like a lot of the young men that signed up. Schofield is older. He's been out there a bit longer. He's gone through the Somme, through Tietval. Um, he's seen horror. Um, he's seen men die. And he wants to go home. He thinks the war is foolish, that it's a waste of life. And he wants to go back to his own life. And just lastly, what do you want audiences to take away from this film when they see it? I hope audiences... When they, you know, when the credits roll, I hope they feel a sense of how amazing the human spirit is. We're told a movie, but men actually lived this. The fact that men survived it, the sort of triumph of it is, I think, really special. That's what struck me a lot in the first-hand account. So I hope audiences leave the idea of how amazing people are.